Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. Uh, and we are in a recovery mode, and I'm delighted that we're talking about something really positive this morning. We've got Chris Hackney, who is, of course, the Managing Director of Morella Cruises. Hello, Chris, how are you? Very good, thank you, Lucy. Thanks for the invite today. How Great to see you. Great, yeah, good. And uh, as I said there, it's a, a positive news because you've just announced that uh, TUI or Morella is going to be joining uh, some of the other cruise lines that are going to be offering round UK sailings. But I'm sure it's very important for you to be getting sailing again after such a long pause in operation. So why don't you tell us your news and what you're going to be offering this summer? Yeah, obviously, as you said, Lucy, that the last sort of 13 months have been very difficult for, for the cruise industry, but I suppose the broader travel sector as well. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's been almost refreshing that over the last couple of months, our, our sort of attention has turned to, to sort of looking at return to service, really. And, you know, I was delighted that we've, we've been able to put on sale our, our first ship last week. So Morella Explore, Explorer is going to be based out of uh, Southampton from the, the end of June uh, and doing some domestic cruises. So I think that's a, a real positive step in the, in the right direction in terms of moving back into a, a return to service phase. Uh, we also announced that we're going to have a second ship based out of the, the UK this summer. Uh, so that's going to be Morella Explorer 2, and that will be based out of Newcastle. Uh, I think the great thing for, 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 for Morella Cruise is that, is that we've always had customers that uh, have come on our ships from all around the UK, really. And this allows us to sort of capture the customers in the southern half of the UK and also the, the northern parts of the UK and Scotland. So I think it's a, a real positive step that we can actually restart our operations now and, and and clearly we're excited about that yeah i'm sure you are and it, it definitely is a positive step and i'm sure it's gone down well so far only the southampton sailings are on sale if i'm right uh, that went on sale on friday so i know it's only been four days but what has the reaction been like have, have you had some good business over the over the weekend yeah no it's great it's great to see the sort of sales coming in really and it's fair to say, even on the first day, we had uh, hundreds of bookings. So it's, it's really good that there's some, some consumer demand out there. We obviously did some, some customer insight as well beforehand, really. And, and it was something that our customers were telling us that they would like to do this this summer. So it's great that we've been able to, to get that first ship on sale. Uh, the Newcastle ship will be going on sale uh, at the end of this month. So uh, not far away now, really. Why, why, why are they separate? You know, why did you... It, was it a sort of tactical to put one on sale for the other or are there sort of logistics reasons why it's gone, going to be on sale later and, and starting sailing later? Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was just more the logistics of the actual setup of those itineraries, really. So uh, that sort of made sense for, for us to do it in terms of a staggered way, really. And, and as you've said, there's a slight staggering in terms of when those, those ships start up in their operation. So uh, the Newcastle ship's first sailing won't be until uh, the 10th of July. So again, we'll be up and running in terms of the sort of the main summer period in, in the UK really and I think it allows us to probably capture on some of the demand for you know staycations have been talked a lot about in the, in the UK media over the last few months really and I think this just uh, complements that with uh, an opportunity for people who want to stay close to home this this year uh, to experience uh, what is a, an excellent value for money cruise experience. All right well tell us about then um, Morella Explorer, the Southampton sailings because you've got I think seven different itineraries. Just give us an idea of because I know you're visiting you've got a slightly smaller ship than some of the bigger ships that are going to be going around the UK so I guess that allows you to, to make a few more ports of call is that right? Yeah I think that's something that we've always you know, been core to our, our proposition is that you know we want to uh, you know, go to a number of different ports as part of our itineraries. Uh, we do have sort of slightly different durations, so we do start with three night durations. Uh, we tend to have probably more seven seven night cruises, and then we have some slightly longer cruises as well, which go around the whole of the, the UK coast for those customers that want to, to see all aspects of the, of the UK. I think it's great because we can call in places such as, you know, Liverpool, which was European capital of culture back in 2008. Uh, you know, Leith to go to Edinburgh, which is obviously on, on the wish list for a number of people to go and see. Uh, and if people really want to go and see uh, the lot, uh, go to Loch Ness, so that's a, that's an option when they we call in Inverbordon as well. So I think the sort of diversity and range of itineraries really allow customers to sort of pick what's what's right for them. But uh, I think it's it's given them enough choice in terms of different sort of lengths of holiday, uh, but also different course of call. Okay, 
Now, not everyone can go. There are restrictions. I mean, it's, it's for UK residents only. And then you're wanting everyone to be fully vaccinated. So that's both shots of the vaccine plus seven days. Is, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's right, really. I think there's been a, you know, a huge amount of work in the, in the last 12 months, really working through what the, the protocols are. Uh, health and safety is clearly a, a priority for, for our crew and for our customers on, on board our ships. We've made a specific decision around sort of vaccinations for our, our domestic cruises, whereby uh, customers will need to have had uh, both vaccinations uh, and a seven day period between uh, their second vaccination and boarding the ship. Um, we do have children, so children will be able to, to go on, on board the ship really. Uh, but as long with the sort of the guidelines and the protocols that, that all, all cruise lines have signed up to, we'll be doing 100% testing in terms of before passengers join the, the ship. So under 18s have got to have that negative lateral flow test before they board. But that's, you know, not all cruise lines are, are welcoming children. So I think, you know, that's quite probably quite important for you for, uh, for the summer holidays. And, you know, in terms of the bookings you've had so far, have you seen family families booking? Yeah, particularly now as it's in the, the school holiday periods as well, we are seeing some families book uh, clearly less so outside of the school holiday periods, really. But I think it's, it allows, you know, we've always had families on board our ships, really. So I think it's something that we're, we were keen to do for, for this summer as well. Okay. But for the second ship coming out of Newcastle from July the 10th, that's an adult only ship anyway, isn't it? Yeah, so Marilla Explorer 2 has always been our, our adults only ship and that will obviously carry on for, for this summer season. So that is, is slightly different really. And uh, on that basis, really all customers will be uh, vaccinated on board that, that ship. Okay. And what about your crew? It, it, you know, there's been some sort of discrepancy between lines some are expecting crew to be vaccinated some aren't what what's your policy yeah no it's, it's, it's a it's an aspiration really for all of our, our crew to, to be vaccinated i think at the moment we, we're following the, the guidelines where you know all crew will be uh, regularly tested really there'll be uh, daily temperature checks as well so that that's going to be our, our policy in terms of our, our crew really to for our return to service okay and then if you know customers that are going on i mean you you talked a bit about the protocols and you know health and safety being paramount of course so when when people are actually on your ships will it feel um you're going to be sailing at full capacity or you're going to have slightly you know reduced capacity so you've got social distancing will it be mask wearing what 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 do you what what do you expect to happen when people are actually on their holiday yeah no we we still want customers to have a great uh, you know, holiday experience and, and we know they will really but there will be some changes and you know, we are going to have reduced occupancies on our, our domestic sailings. Uh, that allows a bit more uh, freedom, really, in terms what, of social. What percentage will you be sailing at? What, you know, how um, you yeah, I, likely to sort of evolve over the summer period, really. So I'd say it's a significant reduction in terms of what our normal occupancies would be on the ship. So it will give that sense of space on board. Uh, we will have social distancing. Uh, Customers will need to wear masks when they're sort of can, moving. Can you say, Chris, sorry, will it be about 50% at you, when you start and then start to increase or will there be a set sort of capacity for the whole summer? What, what do you think will be? It's, it's not going to be a set capacity for the, for the whole summer, really, but I think, you know, it's going to be in that range of around 50% for the initial savings and right. uh, from that point. But I think throughout the summer, uh, we're, we're going to have a reduced occupancy on board our, our ships. Okay. How important is that for you as a sort of a brand and an operation as you sort of get back up to speed? Because, you know, everyone's been, you know, we've not been sailing, have we, for, for the whole year? Is it important to sort of just make sure it's a slow, gradual start to get everything right to make sure that, you know, the whole industry gets this right? I think that's exactly it. You know, we, we want to make sure that this, this, this is a success, really. And uh, we want to make sure that our customers have a great time on board, really. But, you know, we haven't been operating and it will be, you know, the 16, 17 months by the time we do restart our, our operations. So, uh, you know, we're, we're confident in terms of the, the protocols that we're putting in place, uh, you know, we'll make some changes. So, for example, you know, when customers go to, to the restaurant, really, uh, it will be assisted service in the, in the buffet area, for example. Um, it will be you know, table service in the, in the bars. So there will be some changes, but I don't think it will uh, damage the customer experience on, on board, really. And we'll still have... Uh, the same things that customers would typically expect in terms of their, their cruise on road, such as, you know, the West End theatre shows will still be taking place, but we'll have a slightly uh, different capacity levels to what we would typically have on a uh, cruise in previous normal times. Yeah, OK, so they're still going to have a great time, I'm sure. And then your plan is for the other, for Dis Morella Discovery and Discovery 2 then, you're still hoping that you'll be 
well, I guess we're waiting on the government, aren't we, really? But they're, you're, you're planning to then have them out of Palmer and Corfu as they would have normally been. Is that the plan? Yeah, so we've, we've made the decision to, to cancel the, the sailings up to the end of July uh, at this stage. Clearly, you know, whilst global, the Global Travel Task Force report came out uh, a few weeks ago now, it doesn't mean the conversations have stopped with government and those conversations can continue to take place. I think the, the pleasing announcement that came out in the, in the report was that you know, international cruises were linked with international travel. Uh, so I think that, that, was, that was definitely a positive step. Uh, but I think in terms of our, our build-up for our crew, really, that's a, about a three-month process, really. So yeah. we just want to make sure that uh, we're making the decisions based on the, the sort of full information that we need to sort of commence that, that process. So for the time being, uh, we've cancelled up to the, to the end of July in terms of those, those cruises, and you know, we'll continue to review that on a, on a regular basis. So I guess it's key then, is it, when we find out what countries are on the green list, that's the sort of the next thing we're all waiting for, isn't it? So is will that then make you, you know, make a decision whether you can kickstart in Palma or uh, Corfu? Is that sort of how it works? Uh, yes, but also you know, the, the FCD advice is still against cruise travel. That, that, yeah. that does need to be removed as well. So there's, there's a few things that are in terms of the decision making around that. So. I'm still confident and optimistic that international cruises will happen at the, in the second half of the year, really. But at this stage, we're sort of uh, continuing those conversations with government to, to get that, that sort of clarity, really, before making a firm decision on, uh, on the restart. OK, and of course, the other thing that you've been waiting on is to, to eventually start your river, river cruise programme, which I know it must be so frustrating, Chris. I know how excited you were about it. You've got these three ships ready to start operating uh, in Europe, um, and I know I think the last story we wrote, you've, you've pushed that back to the end of June. Um, and again, is that just a wait and see, really, uh, with that, with regards to that program as well? Yeah, again, it's it's, it's frustrating. I mean, la last March, really, we were, we were hoping to launch our, our river cruise operation, really, and uh, and clearly that was uh, taken out of our hands with the the pandemic. So those ships, they do look fantastic. They they look great. We've done a some work on each of the vessels really to, to really develop a proposition that we, we think will go down well with our, our customers. So they're, re they're ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, clearly last year, it wasn't possible to start our, our operation really. Uh, and the start of this year has, has meant that actually we've had to cancel to, to the end of June. Again, it's something that we continue to do on a regular basis at this stage. Uh, but, you know, we're, again, we're hopeful that those river cruise ships will be up and running this summer season. And I think it's it's great when we'll be able to actually showcase what they, they have to offer really to our customers when we can get them on board. Yeah, because we've not we've seen pictures, but we've obviously not not seen them. So that will be fantastic. And and you know, you mentioned they're having to make these cancellations. And I and clearly it's not on the scale whenever, you know, when things started shutting down last year, but it, it, it's relentless, isn't it? You have to keep sort of pushing things back a month, uh, refunding people. What's people's appetite now to keep hold of that you know to maybe just move their booking forward you know are you seeing customers getting a bit weary with it all or are they still thinking no I want to go whether this is ocean or, or river what's the sort of sentiment around customers who've had their booking moved a few times yeah and I think it, you know yeah, it, it's, it's fantastic in terms of how, how loyal our, our customers are really and, and particularly when you look at river cruise where we haven't actually sailed those ships yet um, we've obviously had to do a number of uh, amendments in terms of those uh, those holidays over the last 12 months really and you know we've been at sort of 55 percent sort of retention in terms of those those customers really so uh, really good and really pleasing to see that you know even though customers have been affected in some instances three four times yeah. really in terms of changes that they're they're still raring to actually go and see our, our, our ships and experience that that river cruise holiday so I think that's a real endorsement in terms of you know the broader sort of two brand really but also the fact that uh, our customers really uh, Sort of buy into our sort of proposition that we've sort of set out for not only river cruise ships but also for, for Morella as well. So it's it's really unfortunate, but I think you know customers do understand really that it's it's, it's difficult at the moment really, and uh, you know we appreciate their their support in terms of uh, continuing to sort of stick with us really on this. Yeah, and how and how are you going to cope? You know, obviously we've we've heard about this traffic light system, which is slightly different to last summer because you've got the added green watch list category you know you've got green amber red but we've got the watch list as well how are you going to work that around sort of cancellations refund policies etc because obviously with cruising you're going to different countries as well which may be on or maybe off or maybe moving lists I mean I mean it must be very difficult 
as a tour operator to sort of to, to navigate through that. So what's your plan going to be around that? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that we're, we're not going to be the first uh, sector of the travel industry to be up and running in Europe this, this summer, really, because we've already said that it's going to be uh, to the end of July before uh, the earliest. Uh, clearly, we'll, we'll have to sort of uh, review in terms of based on what the, the sort of travel life system looks at that, that point in time, really. But clearly, we'll talk to our customers, really, and give them a range of options based on uh, any changes that need to happen based on the, what the, the green, amber, red list looks like at that, that stage. So it's as with everything, everything's evolving quite quickly at the moment, really. So we do need to have a bit of flexibility and we'll make sure we, we continue to give customers that flexibility and, and reassurance through, uh, through the remainder of this year. But presumably, if the country is on the green list, or even the green watch list, and you, or even the amber list, you can go there. I guess. Um, you, would you still offer refunds if people changed their minds or weren't sure about travelling? Yeah, I think in terms of obviously the uh, obviously a, a positive step really, and uh, I think the, the green and amber list really is, is, is something that would still look to uh, to operate our, uh, our cruise holidays. Uh, but I think in terms of the sort of flexibility we'll give our customers, really, that's that's something we'll, we'll sort of review and, and, and confirm to them, really. But you know, there, there will be clearly options to, to for customers to amend, really, if they, they feel that they don't want to, uh, to go to a sort of a country where it's on the amber list. Yeah, of course. OK, so we'll, we'll watch that space. That sounds fair. Um, all right. Finally, Chris, we ought to just ask you, I think in December we were reporting about... Um, Morella seeking a new JV partner, um, obviously because you hadn't struck, struck the deal with Royal again. So, what? Where are we? Where are you at with that? Is there any sort of update on? Um, I guess really kind of the future for Morella going forward. Yeah, no, the, there's, there's no real update in terms of that. Clearly, the the industry's gone through a, a challenge in twelve months, so uh, there's no real sort of nothing to announce from from that perspective. Uh, I think the good thing for Morella is we are looking to the future really as well, and I think you know. The cruise industry is obviously in a, in a, uh, it's gone through a difficult period of time, really. But I think the cruise industry is very resilient, really, and our customers uh, are still raring to sort of go back on the, their cruise holidays. And I think you know the cruise industry will come back in the in the coming years. And and we've still got, you know, we've, we're still looking at opportunities to to grow in the, the foreseeable future, really, to to you know, capitalise on what will be a growing industry. And, and I know you've, you've said that before with regarding River, because you said three is just the start and you had plans there. So are you talking both River and Ocean? Do you, do you see your fleets? I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but you obviously feel this is a, a sector to be in for the long term. So what, what do you mean by growing? Is it across River and Ocean? Yeah, I think, you know, from an Ocean perspective, uh, we're obviously we've, we've taken the decision to, to operate just four ships for, for the time being, really. Uh, by, by 2023, really, we're expecting that to sort of uh, increase really to five ships. So uh, we'll probably share some more details uh, later on this year on that. Exactly what that you retired like. you retired celebration a bit earlier than planned, but so where what, what the fifth ship is going to come from? Where uh, I can't I can't say that at this stage, Lucy. You have to wait and see on that one. But uh, you know, we will share that with our, with our customers uh, later on this year as well. But. Uh, the yeah, Morella Celebration, Morella Dream, unfortunately, did leave the, the fleet last year. Uh, clearly, they were, they were always due to leave the fleet. That was probably accelerated a little bit with the, uh, the pandemic, which uh, clearly those decisions, uh, the right decisions at that time. Uh, but, you know, clearly, uh, we've grown up to a, a six-ship fleet, really, and, and we're successfully operating that pre-pandemic, and uh, we feel there's, there's, there's opportunity to grow in the future. Okay, and, and would that would you also look at other parts of the world to cruise in? Because I know obviously you're very strong around the Mediterranean, etc. But you do sell elsewhere. So are you looking at other sort of cruising regions for any kind of new um, tonnage that you bring on? Yeah, no, home ports are different. Home ports have always been something that's key key for us, really. And I think in the past we've we've done different um, different operations. So we we based obviously a ship out in Asia, which was very successful for us. Um, we're always looking in terms of weather. The next opportunity could be in terms of home ports, and uh, again, I think by twenty twenty three we'll be we'll be looking at in terms of where where we can potentially base a ship in a, in a different different home port to to give again our customers a, a choice in terms of destination. This is always something that comes through in the customer insight is that customers want to experience the places really. They they love going on a Morella Cruises holiday really, but it's actually uh, the destinations as well as a part of their decision making. Yeah. 
And just back to the UK thing, which is obviously what we started, do you think that you'll get some new customers coming to Morella because you've obviously got the ships going so close to home? I mean, could that be actually a great opportunity to showcase what you've got and to get new people on board and, you know, turn them on to cruising? I think that's it. I think, you know, like I say, it's, you've seen publicity about the staycation market and how, how busy the, the UK is going to be this summer, really. And, and we, we shouldn't forget that cruise holidays are great value for money. You know, it's an all-inclusive holiday. You know, we have West End theatre shows on board, a la carte dining, um, all tips and surcharges. Food. Actually, the, the value for money is, is fantastic in terms of a cruise holiday. And I think customers will see that. And arguably, we will get some customers that want to try cruise for the first time because it sort of complements the fact that they want to, to stay close to home this year. Yeah. All right. Well, we really hope that happens for you, Chris. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you well. Do let us know uh, a bit more uh, about the Newcastle sailings when they go on sale. We hope they'll go well. And also about this fifth ship. That's very exciting. So um, we'll speak to you again soon, I'm sure. Great. Thanks, Lucy. Good to speak to you. Thank you.